Hello, my name is Nathalie Lesage of Faithful Living Home. Welcome to my channel. This is part two of this week's topic. If you want to go to see part one first, I'll link it below in the description. So this week's topic is, are you still living in the wilderness? And this is key. Uh, and this is a continuation. So, you know, you can watch the parts whichever way you want, but... Um, it's really important to understand this key component. It's easy to say with our lips that we are born again Christians, but it's another thing entirely to live it with our daily thoughts and actions. Paying lip service or just saying something or being in Christian mode while we're in church for a few hours, not even that, sometimes an hour a week, isn't enough. If you haven't really paid attention to what's going on in the world, there's a lot of things going on that are really sounding the alarm to those that know the Bible, that there's some big things coming. And they're coming fast. And you need to be ready and I pray that you will be able to watch this video and all the others on this channel so that you can be prepared for what's to come. So speaking of taking action, I am self-sponsoring this video <laughs> uh, for a moment. I have written and designed a beautiful Bible study uh, journal that will be available for purchase on Amazon in just a few weeks. Um, it'll be available in English, in French, and in Spanish. And this was a project that the Holy Spirit put on my heart. Really, he strongly encouraged me to do it. And I'm really so grateful for his suggestion because it also helped me in my Bible studies. And so as I was developing it and he was guiding me, it really helped me dig in deeper and understand better the Word of God. And so I'm really looking forward to the launch. And I believe this journal is going to be such a helpful tool uh, for everyone who wants to get out of the wilderness of this world, speaking of this week's topic, and walk closer to Jesus every day. If you're interested in being notified and benefit from the special launch price that I will have, um, then look in the description below and um, there's going to be a journal sign up link for you to get on to the book launch insiders uh, email list and you just click on that link it'll take you to a landing page where you just enter your email address that's all i need i don't need your name or anything else i'm not going to spam you this is strictly so that you get first notification um, of the book launch of course i'm going to talk about it on my channel as well once it's live and, and available for purchase but uh, having the email will make sure that you don't miss out on the launch book price um, that will be at a uh, discount, you know, like the best price I can give you. Uh, of course, pricing on uh, book publishing on Amazon increases on the regular because of cost of materials and shipping and all these things that they, they do. Um, and so, you know, I have to work with that, uh, but I will give you the best price possible um, to get this going and help as many people as possible. And so if you want to be on that list, make sure to enter your email address in the link below. So today's video, part two, I would like to start with this verse today from John chapter 12, verses 25 and 26. And I'll read from the Amplified Bible. I read uh, the, my notes on my phone here, the Bible notes. So it says, the one who loves his life eventually loses it through death. But the one who hates his life in this world, excuse me, as it's concerned with pleasing God, will keep it for life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must continue to faithfully follow me without hesitation, holding steadfast to me, conforming to my example in living 
and in if need be suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. And wherever I am in heaven's glory, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So today, I will share some ways to help you surrender control of your flesh over to Yahweh God. Think about this for a moment. Satan deceived a third of the angels that were in the presence of God. So can you imagine the power that Satan has over us mere people, men and women in the flesh, who don't surrender to God? We are all, as a society and as a world, so far out in the wilderness even Christians, like, we don't see. It's just so impossibly, impossibly wild out there. And we really need to stop and refocus and make sure that we're aligned with the Bible and focus on it every single day. As Paul wrote to believers in Romans chapter 8, verse 13, and I'm reading from the Amplified here, For if you are living according to the impulses of the flesh, you are going to die. But if you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death the sinful deeds of the body, you will really live forever. Paul was talking to the Gentiles, the born-again Christians. If you are not familiar with the book of Romans, I highly recommend that you study it intensely. So first, we must remember that God accepts us as we are. Okay? We're no surprise to Him. And he knows our past and he doesn't hold it against us. We have been forgiven. Thank you, Yahweh God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. However, now that we're born again, he has forgiven us, but we must not go back to the past behaviors and thought patterns. We are reborn made new in the Holy Spirit, and we need to move forward from that point on. Remember the story of Lot's wife, who longingly looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt? In Genesis chapter 19, verses 24 to 26, and I am reading from the Amplified Bible, then the Lord rained down brimstone, flaming sulfur, and fire on Sodom and on Gomorrah from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew, he demolished, he ended those cities, and the entire valley, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and whatever grew on the ground. But Lot's wife, from behind him, foolishly, and longingly looked back toward Sodom in an act of disobedience, and she became a pillar of salt. Do you believe the words that are written in the Bible? Do you believe that this actually happened? It is written in the Bible. It happened. It's a fact. We cannot deny that, and we cannot deny the consequences of disobeying God. So remember that once you are declaring yourself as being born again, you must leave your past behind. You are a new creation under Yahweh God. It's a fresh start. It's a brand new, beautiful day. Rejoice and enjoy this wonderful blessing, this chance that we have been given to escape hell. Because 
that's where the whole world was heading, into hell. The only way not to end up there is to turn towards God and obey Him faithfully and not turn back on our old ways and old habits and not be enticed back by the world around us, family, friends, workplace, all kinds of things. And I talk about that in many of the videos that I've recorded so far. In 2 Corinthians, Corinthians, sorry, chapter 5, and this is from the Amplified Bible, I'm reading verses 17 to 19. Therefore, if anyone in Christ that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual conditions have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. But all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, making us acceptable to him and gave us the ministry of reconciliation so that our example by our example, we might bring others to him. And that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them. And he has committed to us <clears throat> the message of reconciliation, that is, restoration to favor with God. So it's not about who you were, but it's about who you are now. And it's about the actions that you're taking from now on. Don't let the enemy tell you otherwise. So how does the life of a born-again Christian that's not looking back at the wilderness work? Step one. Excuse me, my nose, allergies. <laughs> Love Yahweh God. Enough to seek him through the Bible every single day. Pray and ask him to take out of you anything that is not of him. Leave the things of man behind without longing for it. Don't be like Lot's wife. Also, pray every day and ask Yahweh God how you can be of service to him. Recognize that he has a lot to teach you, so be willing to do what he asks you to do. Become increasingly obedient to him, without hesitation and without questioning him. Secondly, look at things that are on your list of priorities, your daily to-do list, your weekly, monthly to-do list. Are there things on there that you can't let go of? How about long work hours or if you're a workaholic? Money. Shopping for things like clothes, jewelry, makeup, cars, home decor, stuff in excess. Seeking to elevate your look or your status out of, you know, doing better than the Joneses or the people out there or emulating stars or, or singers or actors and, and, and all kinds of stuff of the world. Okay. Oh, they have this new gadget. Oh, I need that too. No, you don't. Are you hooked on social media? How many likes or followers you have? The importance on self instead of the importance of God. Is there anything in your life that doesn't serve God? Do you place more importance on things of the world than on God and obeying Him faithfully? We're all struggling with that. 
and nobody's perfect. But like Paul said, every day we must push forward and strive to do better and be more and more aligned with God and say no and resist the old sins and get rid of those bad habits. Because those bad habits get you to hell. Thirdly, love all people, not the sins, hate the sins, but love all people. Pray for all people, even your enemies, including those who cause you pain in the past or anything, governments, leaders. Pray for your pastor, pray for your church leaders. Pray for everyone and be of service to others. By being of service, I mean being of service to your spouse. Be a better spouse to your spouse. Be a better wife. Be a better husband. Be a, 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 of service to your children. Be a better mom. Be a better dad towards your children. Be of service to your friends your community, your church, your workplace, where you volunteer. Fourthly, share the truth of Jesus Christ. Not just his love, but also express the truth of the huge price he paid. Don't take his sacrifice for granted. We are sinful, and that must be called out. We are to use scriptures to help show the right way to go and help course correct ourselves as well as others. It's not judging. It's about teaching the truth and showing it. And by all means, praise Yahweh God, praise Jesus Christ, praise the Holy Spirit publicly for His blessings. And repeat that every day. Start small. It's not about perfection. It's about becoming excellent at obeying Him and being fully committed to serving Him who has given you life. A life with His purpose for you in mind. It's not your life. Your life belongs to Him. We must become excellent in the small things first before moving on to bigger things. Be an excellent student of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in you and wants to teach you. And this is key. Soften your heart. Open your ears. Remove the scales from your eyes. And let the Holy Spirit gradually develop you into the fullest potential. And He will lead you out of the wilderness. And my friends, that is a glorious journey. I pray that this recording is helpful to you. And if it is, please, I would absolutely appreciate if you can put a, a like on this video, share it fr with friends, put some comments or questions if you want to. I'll be happy to answer. If I don't know the answer, I'll research and I'll answer you when I have the answer. I'm here to help. I'm here to serve you. I always have in the description box below links to excellent Bible teachers who can help you get on your way. And soon, my Bible journal, my Bible study journal will be available as well. And it's, I believe, a really helpful tool. So thank you again for listening. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend.